And actually, um, some humans, like our, our genome likes to be as frugal as possible, you know, so whatever is out there, it's going to try to use as much as it can. But also we like to steal things from other populations. So um, like Tibetans have adapted to high altitude mm -hmm. and the genes that gave them that adaptation, we actually took from um, an archaic hominid. Um, so like, like Neanderthals, but their Denisovans were kind of around the same time. So mm -hmm. this kind of cousin lineage of humans they had been living at altitude for a hundred thousand years or more by the time humans got there and so humans mixed with them and kept the genes that gave oh, them an humans advantage bred with the denisovans exactly and created and and then in turn created babies that had this gene that made them thrive in these super high altitudes mm -hmm. wow exactly. we know, that's another curious yeah. thing is like why why there's so many there's like what 500 something species of primates still today i don't, I don't know the number i but think there's over something. five I, I think i googled it and it was like over 500 species of mm -hmm. primates and only one species of homo sapien mm -hmm. yeah yeah how does that make sense you know we really don't know <laughs> what happened because we had you know neanderthals denisovans humans all were there together and you know we've seen in ancient DNA samples from certain areas, like first generation crosses of Neanderthals and Denisovans. So we know that there was a lot of mixture happening because you know, what are the chances we would find that otherwise? Um, and then, yeah, I don't know how we were the last man standing, but we took all the genetic material that we could from, from those other lineages before we wiped them out in some way. <laughs> Isn't it crazy though? Like mm -hmm. how different we are. Yeah. You know, like there's no, there's no, like if you look at all the different primates that exist today and look at the the modern human, there's like, there's them, then there's this giant leap mm -hmm. and then there's us. There's not like a gradual, I mean, a little bit. There are some people who are a little bit more ape-like. <laughs> there's some people who are a lot more evo like evolved, mm -hmm. um, but like, not really like there's not there's not really any like neanderthals were like legitimate neanderthals or people who are halfway between primates and humans walking around today it's like either primate or human mm -hmm. yeah. which in like if you just go to the primate population there's such a wide variety mm -hmm. and i know the human genomes like is pretty also uh is, is pretty veritable like there's a large variety right. in the genome but mm -hmm. like um as far as like the species we don't vary that much, it doesn't seem like. Right, yeah. Well, because we're pretty adaptable. I mean, we're really good at making technologies that mm -hmm. enable us to survive in right. cold environments, hot environments, you know, around water. Like, we're really good at fishing, so we don't necessarily need to dive. And mm -hmm. um, our physiology is very plastic, as we say in mm -hmm. physiological research. Like, it's changeable. You know, we can go from, they're like boot camps, or you can learn to free dive and go from like a 30 second breath hold to a two minute breath hold in a mm -hmm. week just by learning techniques or, you know, working on different things with your physiology. So maybe it's just that we're so adaptable in a physiological sense that we haven't had to adapt that much in a genetic sense um, because we can really take on most challenges pretty well. Yeah. So what is the like simple conventional explanation for this, for this leap from primates to humans? Like in a, I know, I know there's a lot that goes into it, but like, yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of fun theories people like to talk about that is, happen a lot on podcasts where uh -huh. like people like say a monkey, like the, one day a monkey ate a mushroom, psychedelic mushroom, uh -huh. and that accounted for the doubling of the brain size and all this stuff and mm -hmm. developing technology. Um, there's other ideas like panspermia, like, uh, like comet fragments that hit the earth that had like uh, alien DNA on them somehow mixed with primates and that, mm -hmm. that accounted for the evolution. I mean, there's so many, like you could, people like to fill the gaps with things they that don't really, that are kind of like way out there. Like you could fill mm -hmm. the gap with like God, you could fill the gap with aliens, mm -hmm. you can fill the gap with psychedelics, uh -huh. but like there's no, like I haven't heard the conventional reasoning for it, at least not in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I tend to focus on so much more recently than right, that in right. terms of looking at humans. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of like out of Africa and later. Um, yeah, so right. yeah, I'm not sure. But I'm also like, you know, as long as it's supported by 
evidence that's out there. And we do have really incredible because we can con reconstruct so much in terms of the genetic data that we have mm -hmm. from present times and then kind of rewinding back in time. Um, so, you know, to the point where we can date when certain migrations happened and things yeah. like that, just based on modern DNA. Um, so, yeah, but then, you know, beyond a certain point, I guess it probably becomes more difficult because so much time has passed, but that's kind of outside of my, uh, which I know is a, is a cheap answer, but outside right. of my area of expertise. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. No, it, but it's fun to speculate on this time. Of yeah. Style. Yeah. Well, do you, do you think it's possible that, um, our evolution has been linear or do you think it's possible that there was, um, like a reset ever in history of human evolution? Yeah, as far as I know from the genetic data that we have, there's no evidence of that. Like there's not like some weird piece of DNA that that we don't know where it came from. I mean, there is in the sense that we knew Denisovans existed before we found the first Denisovan bone because we said, okay, there's there's this bit of DNA that's coming in in a certain part of the world at a higher frequency that seems to have come from like a parallel lineage to humans. Mm. Um, so people hypothesized that there was this other lineage. And then someone found like a pinky bone in a cave. And sure enough, that matched perfectly to this piece that we had. Right. So, you know, we're really good at kind of seeing okay there's a piece that doesn't quite make sense but we think this is about when it came in and mm. then luckily you know we were able to confirm that with this bone and ancient dna which is an incredible um you know leap in terms of technology mm. um but yeah otherwise i'm not i'm not aware of any any gaps that uh as, as fun as it would be to uh, speculate yeah. in that especially coming from like an astrobiology background right. so i was thinking a lot about how different molecules could reach the earth on comets, on fragments of meteorites, things like that. Mm. Yeah, and there's just so much history that we have no, I mean, even going back to like 2000 years ago, like mm -hmm. we, we, we have no clue what the hell was going on back then, you know? Uh -huh. Like we can look at obviously like, uh, uh, like DNA stuff and like we have ancient texts and we have writing and we have, you know, paintings and stuff like that. But to actually like go back and to, uh, you know, because I always, I always wonder, like, was there a time in history where uh, we were on a different evolutionary or technological trajectory than we're mm -hmm. on now, you know, that made us like, and this is another interesting thing when it comes to um genes and genomics is like intelligence like did we did we have like a a super high intellectual capacity far back into the past that was just a different type of intelligence right than what mm -hmm. we have today because right because today like if you look at the tra trajectory humans are on with technology it seems like we're compensating for a lot of our our brain power and a lot of our uh intellectual power with technology and mm -hmm. we're just developing new and new things um that people like to buy and people like to use to make tasks easier yeah so like i was just like like, like how does that affect the evolution of us where do we end up on this current trajectory with ai mm -hmm. and all the self-driving cars mm -hmm. and uber eats where do we end up yeah. in, in, in you know fifty thousand years right well one thing that you said i, th I feel like is related to a very important point, which is that, you know, when we talk about trajectories, I feel like we have this, we're so trained that evolution is is leading us in this like better, brighter, smarter direction. Like we mm. have this image of like ape transforming to man, you know, and it's like, we are the pinnacle. Right. Everything's getting better all the time. And that's like, evolution doesn't have a direction. It doesn't care. It's just about being, it's not about being, I mean, you know, we say survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm it's the best fit, not the most fit. So if our environment changes in a way where being super intelligent doesn't actually help us that much, then suddenly we're not gonna be selecting for that. We're not gonna be evolving in that direction. Um, so it's really just about being the best fit to our environment. Interesting. Um, so yeah, I think it's like, you know, we have this, this skewed idea that of course centers us as being like, the ultimate apex um, of evolution, but I think so. That the people who are the most adapted to their external environments, mm -hmm. yeah, are the ones that are going to evolve, right? So, like you know, at the time of dinosaurs, dinosaurs were totally on top of everything. They were the perfect fit to the Earth as it was at that time. 
humans ancestors were just these little rodents running around at night um, because mm -hmm. that was the only time we could avoid the dinosaurs um, and so because of that people think um, we were adapted to colder temperatures because we were going around at night and again these are like rodents you know these are very what we would think of now as like poorly adapted or just kind of very primitive yeah. animals right right meteor hits um suddenly the whole earth is transformed into this much colder environment and now the dinosaurs are very poorly adapted um they're a bad fit to that new environment but we as the night dwellers who are better at handling cold temperatures are suddenly the best fit so despite the fact that we're these like tiny pathetic little creatures you know we're suddenly on top of the world from an evolutionary perspective because we are the best fit to this new environment oh wow I've never thought about it like that. That's really interesting. Ah!